how much should you charge? Should you lease out your property short term or long term? How do you find tenants? Hi everyone, this is Charm again and welcome back to my channel where we talk about personal finance, entrepreneurship, and adulting how-tos. A lot of you guys have been considering investing in real estate so that you can have passive income in the future. But most are still hesitant or they're not sure how to manage a rental property or they don't really know what being a landlord entails. Should you lease out your property short term or long term? How much should you charge? How do you find tenants? Did you know that you need to register a rental property business? For those who are yet to have their first real estate property or even those who already have properties to rent out, let's try to answer those questions today. This video is sponsored by Primary Homes but more of them later on. The first thing that you need to know when you are starting out your rental property business is to know your market. The best thing I found when it comes to knowing your market in this scenario is to know whether you want to rent it out short term or long term. Let's talk about short term rental first. Short term rental usually means higher income but also it entails more work. This can be for vacationers, business trips, or staycations. A tip I can give you guys is that when you are renting short term, a very major thing that you have to take note of is the location of your property. For projects that are situated within CBD areas or in the middle of the city, maybe they're near airports or tourist destinations like the Royal Ocean Crest Mactan, it would be really convenient for your target market because they're minutes away from the sites. Now let's talk about long-term rental. There might be a lower income but it also means less work. Usually you are catering to different individuals or families. Individuals could include students or those who are working maybe in the area. And families can include newlyweds or couples or families that might have kids pets, grandparents, etc. So of course, this would depend also on the size of your property if you can accommodate them. So when it comes to property rental, the property features and amenities are very important. It's a plus when the units are well planned and there are amenities that promote a balanced lifestyle so that you can cater to different types of individuals or families. For example, a two-bedroom in Royal Ocean Crest Mactan could be perfect for a small family. They can easily enjoy resort-like amenities with the comforts of city living. So those are just some things that you have to take note of if you are trying to cater to a certain audience or a market. Okay, now that you've identified your target market, let's talk about pricing. So there's no one right way to price. I'm actually gonna give you guys several options wherein you can try to compute and you can try to see which might work for your property so first is the 0.8 to 1 percent rule so 1 percent is the ideal it's quite ambitious but it kind of expects a perfect economy and you going for short-term rental all the time because of the higher income but it's not always practical it means that your monthly rental or your monthly income from your property should be 0.8 8 to 1% of the total contract price you bought it for. So for example, you bought a condominium for 2.8 million pesos. 0.8% of that is 22,400 and 1% 1 is 28,000. So this should be more or less the range that you would be going for. Again, these are the ideal scenarios. Most of the people, especially during this pandemic, are only earning between 05 to 0.7% per month. So the second way to compute is through the PR ratio or price to rent ratio. This is usually used when you are trying to figure out if the rental of the property is expensive or not for the area. And you can just reverse this wherein the formula is the total contract price divided by 12 which is the number of months in a year times either 12, 15, or 18. So if you're going to use a number 15 and below, that means you're an area that's really in demand, prices there are quite expensive, rental there is quite high or expensive, and if you're going to use a number 15 and above, then that's usually the usual rate of real estate properties. So let me give you guys an example. If we take the 2.8 million divided by 12, times 12 that will equal to 
19,444. So you can consider maybe renting your property out at 19,500. And the second one is if we will use 15, was 15,555. So maybe you want to consider renting it out for 15,500. And then lastly, if we use 18, it's roughly around 13,000 pesos. So you would have an idea where in your range is around 13,000 pesos for the lower end and 19,500 for the higher end. So you can decide where in the spectrum you want to be. And then lastly, and this is without computations, I feel like this is the easiest way to decide how much you want to rent out your property. Look at the prevailing market rates. So when I say prevailing market rates, there's no clear chart for this. You have to go ahead and research whether in Facebook Marketplace or rental property websites, what the ongoing rates are in other properties similar to your own. So especially if you own a condo unit, or a townhouse within a subdivision, then you're going to have a very clear indication of how much the other prices are because you're probably the same size unit. It's a very similar area. Most of the time, these are called competitive market rates because people are trying to price very near each other for the similar or same properties. Okay, now that I gave you guys few ideas on how to decide on the pricing of your property, now let's talk about the other fees. First is the security deposits and advances. So the usual security deposit is two months of your monthly rental and for the advance it's one month of your monthly rental. So there's no limit to the security deposit that you can ask for but usually you would turn people off also if you're asking for too much. But if your rental is below 10,000 pesos then according to Republic Act 9653 or the Rent Control Act you can only ask for a maximum of two months security deposit. There are also other other possible fees that you can ask for like a move in or move out fee in our experience we've been charged around one to three thousand pesos for this another is a cleaning fee especially if you're doing short-term rental and you have a guest who wants to stay for five days or a week and they want a hotel experience where and someone goes in to clean every day so this can be around 15 to 25 pesos per square meter in my experience so for example for a 20 square meter property you can charge between 3 to 500 pesos since you're not necessarily trying to earn also from the cleaning it's part of the service that you offer so another is kusa or homeowners association or condo juice and you can decide if you want to include this in your monthly rental or not so there are also other fees i'm just gonna list them here Okay, now let's talk about how you can find a tenant. But before that, a word from our sponsor, Primary Homes. For those looking for a property to invest in, you can consider looking at Royal Ocean Crest Mactan. It is a mixed-use community developed by Primary Homes. It is strategically located right at the center of modern establishments at the tropical island of Mactan. It's just a bridge away from the bustling business capital of Cebu. With Royal Ocean Crest Mactan, you are investing in a track record of tried, tested, and trusted services in property development by a reliable developer. The units range between 28 to 60 square meters, currently priced at around 2 to 5 million pesos. If you're interested to avail their flexible financing options, fill up the Google Sheet that I will put down below in the description. I will also pin it in the comments. Their sales staff will reach out to you. Don't worry, I told them not to force you guys, not to hard sell, but only accommodate those who are interested and who inquired. Again, thank you so much Royal Ocean Crest Mactan by Primary Homes for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about how you can find your tenants. Next thing that you have to do is to promote your rental property. Of course, there's always the route wherein you can get a property manager, someone who's already been doing this a long time or who is currently managing several properties and they know where to find people who would fit best in your property. But also if you guys want to do DIY, you can of course take advantage of the platforms and tools online. You can check out rental websites, you can make 
make use of Facebook groups, Facebook marketplace, and then of course, the most famous one is Airbnb. Everybody wants to do Airbnb. They do take out a bigger fee. That's why people really prefer to do it manually. But yeah, to start out, it's a great way to market your property. When it comes to marketing your property online, one thing that I want to share to you guys is always to take good photos, stage good photos. I can do another video on this. There's definitely a lot of hacks that you can do. But one thing that you should do is to open all the windows, all the curtains, let the light in and take photos during the day because it really makes a really big difference and it will avoid blurry photos, photos that make your property look so unappealing, so scary and so tight. Obviously, you want people to feel welcome. So yeah, take good photos. Okay, next let's talk about turning over a property. There's a few things that you have to take note of. First is the contract. Of course, if you are not doing it in a platform like Airbnb or Booking.com, you have to take care of the contracts yourself. Make sure that you have it checked by an attorney and it is notarized. This is also what you call a lease agreement or a lease contract. And this should be signed every page. And again, it should be notarized. Another thing that you have to take note of is for your unit to be move in ready. Especially if you are doing short-term rental, you might have a guest almost every Every day and it always has to be in great shape every day and even if it's a long-term rental you should still make sure that when your client or when your tenant moves in there's no more personal belonging there's nothing that needs fixing anymore because as the landlord they're still gonna call you for that and lastly is to have a checklist and sign off on the current state of the property so with rental properties you don't usually allow your tenants to drill holes or paint an entire room or or if you do, you would require your tenants to put it back the way it was before they leave. So it's best to take pictures and do a checklist on what the state of the property is, if there are existing cracks, if there are existing missing tiles, and etc. So that you don't blame it on the tenant as well if they move out. Okay, next is collecting rent. Again, if you're using a platform, you don't really have a problem for this because the platform actually keeps the money before they check in until they move out. So you don't have a lot of things to think about. But when you are doing long-term rentals or off-site rentals, then you have to think about this. So you can either do post-dated checks, advance payments, or monthly payments. When it comes to post-dated checks, you can have them write out checks for the entire year. Maybe date it every first day day of the month and then just cash in the money every month. I feel like this is the easiest way to go about it because you don't have to keep on trying to collect rent from them and the other way is monthly rental. This is when maybe your tenant is a foreigner they don't have a checking account or maybe it's just more convenient for them to pay in cash or to pay you in person or to send the money to you every month. So it really depends upon you and what your preference is is. Okay, next is to keep track of your cash flow. The cash flow for long-term rental looks very simple. It's just really the monthly rental minus maybe your amortization or other minor expenses. And then you have your net profit. But especially when you are doing short-term rental, you have to take note of all your expenses. If you're a short-term rental or an Airbnb and you have to buy tissue all the time, coffee, um, water, and all of these extra amenities that you don't typically pay for for long-term tenants. So internet is already paid for, condo juice is all under you. So you have to take note of all of those expenses to make sure that you are still making money. So I'll put a template that you can download and use down below. Just make a copy of the Google Sheets file. It will basically include a tenant schedule and income coming in, your expenses, and an overview or monthly summary. Okay, now we're down to or last thing, make sure that your business is registered. Yes, running a property rental business, even if it's just one property, is a business and you need to register it. I already have a video up on my channel about how to register a business and that applies to this as well. I will link that up above. But basically, you need to register with the BIR so that you can also have OR booklets. You will need a mayor's permit. If you're doing an Airbnb, you might also need 
need a permit from the Department of Tourism. And you can also have a DTI or SEC. This can be optional depending on how many properties you have. It's ideal to separate it from yourself and make a corporation if you are handling a lot of properties. Alright, so that is our video for today. I hope that you guys learned something and you are more confident at renting out your property now. And if you guys want me to break down all the expenses that buying, furnishing, and fitting out a condo unit, then comment down below. We have our Airbnb and I can use that as an example. If you want more real estate property videos or real estate investing, then I have an entire playlist. I will link that up above. And if you like this video, then please share it to your friends, to your families. Hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. And also subscribe if you haven't already or ring that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload another video. And again, I know that adulting can be hard. That's why I love making these videos for you guys. This is Charm again and I will see you on my next video. This is Charm again from Reddit Adult. Ah.